So here's a Ubuntu OS. Uh, here you're showing this off. Uh, here the canonical area. So uh, what's the latest with the Ubuntu OS? Uh, Ubuntu OS is uh, we built a whole new experience, uh, user experience on top of the tablet and the phone. So we call it Ubuntu OS on the phone, Ubuntu for phone. Uh, it's built on top of Android BSP, so that's the reason why the community member they can bring up Ubuntu OS on various different dev uh, phone devices in very short time and make it work on whatever phone very in very short time. So here uh, we we are using uh, the the Nexus 4 and Nexus 10 for build up our demo unit. So you can actually do things like playing video uh, like this. The phone user interface is very, uh, very sleek, and you can do things like uh, forward and backward. And the coolest thing is the preview window, that you can see the previews the when player. you're, yeah, when you are uh, playing the video and trying to make a quick, quick forward nice. to another scene. So when you say uh, Android BSP, what does that mean? Oh, so the, the BSP things are actually con uh, include the bootloader thing and the kernel driver and some uh, Android framework. So um, for uh, for Ubuntu OS, we don't need things like uh, Delvic, the Java engine. So we, we just remove it and build Ubuntu on top of it. And so now that you can see the application here, they're actually written by Qt and we support uh, HTML5 web apps uh, as well. So that is the... Do you support all Ubuntu apps? Um, it's a different uh, software architecture from the desktop. The, the Lexi desktop, but we are trying to make a, a complete ecosystem. So we, we provide the SDK that for developers, they can use Qt to write their own app. And the, the single single app, they can run on various different uh, devices. Like uh, on the phone, you, you the developer, they write a simple uh, applications. They can run on the phone, tablet, and the PC as well. So over here, you have Android on, this is uh, Android, this is Ubuntu on Android. Ubuntu for Android. So what is the difference between the Ubuntu here and Ubuntu there? So basically, they are completely di two different product, different Im software Im implementation, different graphic architecture. So for for the Ubuntu for Android, actually we are, we are building in a uh, on a high end phone and that has a powerful CPU, so they can have capable to run both uh, operating system at the same time. So we we show it last year and we did a lot of the optimization on the. On the device here as well. What so kind, what you kind can, of optimization are you doing? We we are making the the phone feature more complete. Like uh, you can write uh, SMS message from through the Ubuntu desktop. So you can actually uh, reply. We support Chinese other other language as well. So that's very easy to to integrate to the, this kind of device. So this is this is the product that I mean to existing the Ubuntu users they they have Android phone and they might lo love this this kind of product because they don't have another, they don't need to have another laptop to to run their so old business they're doing their daily work. So Android and Ubuntu run at the same time. Yes. Basically. Yes. And, and they also talk to each other. That's the most important thing. Yeah. That, that, that easy. That that's very easy to bring up two, maybe three operating system on the device. Yeah. But the the biggest part is to make him make them talk to each other. So Ubuntu desktop, they can con contact to the Android side for the contact. Like uh, if I yeah. do a quick search to maybe my name, I can easily search my name. Or if I want to search for an app for like a calendar or a calculator <coughs> thing. That's easy. They can, but we can, the Unity experience, they can do quick search on you, whatever thing. Could you that. unite things even more? Could you like uh, run Android apps on Ubuntu UI and Ubuntu apps on Android UI? We, we are currently not doing that because there are some limitations from the graphic architecture, but technically we can run, uh, run the, the Android app. So, so, but that require 
uh, the efforts, uh, the support from two vendor device, they, they need to optimize the graphic stack for a bit, then we can we are able to do that. So but you could have so a window far, with the Android apps on Ubuntu? That's possible. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. That's a totally different thing. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're using two different graphics stack. So we're not really want to put the Ubuntu uh, apps running on the Android side because they're, they're, they're designed for different user scenario. The, the, the Android uh, apps, they're designed for touch yeah. based. But for Ubuntu applications from the App Store, yeah. they're actually... Desktop. Yeah, desktop. They're, they're manipulated by the keyboard and mouse. So they don't fit into each other. But how about the cute apps that are running here, cute based and all that HTML5? How about running these apps on Android? Running and running them app. also on Ubuntu desktop. Does that no, make sense? we we don't we don't do it running on Android so because Android are running Dalvik engine, they support Java HTML5, but they are not support the the cute apps as well. Right Could now. you add cute to Android? No, we, we 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 will not do that. We will only do that for Ubuntu. But so is it we, possible, or is it possible that somebody do it? We we let the, this answer to Android developers. We we are uh, Ubuntu. We we develop Ubuntu, so okay. we we do the optimization for Ubuntu. Okay. And this UI that you have, uh, how do you, how do you log in? Sorry. Da. So here's the welcome screen, so you can simply get this. into the apps and uh, go back to the home screen. But this UI is impossible to add as a home replacement for Android, right? Sorry again. This this whole UI, this whole user interface system here. Could you release that as a home replacement for Android? Or is that doesn't make that, any sense. That doesn't make sense. So, so we're we are trying to build another uh, software architecture here yeah. on the phone. So we are running the Qt uh, runtime on this one, on the on, on tablet, on the phone, on the desktop as well. But running Qt apps on on the Android basis totally different thing. So we are, we are not using the Delvic engine, so we only use their, their kernel piece, their driver piece, to run the Ubuntu software. So uh, you say this is only two weeks of work for any Android device maker to port Ubuntu OS. is a couple of weeks, two, three weeks, you say, because it's based on Android BSP? Yes. So that makes it easy to, any Android device out in the conference, in theory, could have this. Yes, they, they can they they can easily uh, if the, if the open source the, the Android part is open source, then that will be very easy to put Ubuntu OS on top of it because uh, we we are open source. So many so many community members they yeah. they can do that by their own. There's even the instructions what part you have to remove and put in and stuff or like people so, can figure so out. So the, the the baseline is that the user they will. Able to the, the developer, they will easily to bring Ubuntu OS on, on the new device, but there's some room for optimization as well. So f things like uh, video alteration and uh, display performance that might require some optimization on it with the uh, hardware provider in the future. But putting them in together and and prove set up for uh, like a demo unit or proof of concept that that's very easy. So we actually. Uh, Lower the 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 base the basic effort for bring up the Ubuntu device for a bit. So the developer or the OEM they are actually build something on top of the Android. So they don't need to uh, stop thing from the scratch. So they they need to uh, maybe ask the two vendor to write to provide an, another set of the BSP driver things. So they, they, that's more less effort for the phone manufacturers. So, uh, how much effort is there for that solution compared to this solution? Uh, we don't, we don't want to put them into together because they're a totally different product. But how much, how difficult is it to implement? If this is a Nexus Four. Mm -hmm. This is a Nexus Four, right? Mm -hmm. So, let's say there's another device. Let's say Galaxy S Four mm -hmm. as an example. Uh, is it easier to do this solution or to that solution, or is it the same? To, you know, you have to f modify the firmware for this to work, right? Yes. So how much work is required over there compared to this one? That's a very complex problem because oh. the, we, we have this for open source from the open, the, the open source code, AOSP, yeah. but uh, we have this as well. So um, if you want to answer that question, I don't want to answer that question because they're totally oh, different. Yeah. But I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to comment about that. But yeah. this has been updated since last year, right? Yes. How much has been done here? Like just, you, you showed me the SMS, but 
you, are you speeding it up? Are you optimizing? Now it's a much faster phone, I guess. Mm -hmm. Then last year it was a uh, was it OMAP OMAP uh, four, and uh, now you are over on the uh, uh, Qualcomm S four. Mm -hmm. uh, it could even be like what is new? Yes. So we wrote another Ubuntu control app here. That user they can control the Ubuntu session from the phone. So if I click on the shutdown, then Ubuntu will sh completely shut down and release the DRAM and release the CPU to back to Android. So you can use Android as a phone, or you can suspend Ubuntu in the background. Nice. So it's yes. actually well, to have both running at the same time. It's using some RAM. Yes. How much RAM does it need? How much RAM? The, 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 for this kind of the device, including Android side, we will say minimum one gigabyte, minimum one gigabyte DRAM, and 1.5 dual core CPU required. That's the minimum requirement for for Ubuntu for an, for Android. So this is like kind of like a setting control app on Android. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, now both are running at the same time. Is is it like 500 megabytes for Ubuntu and 500 megabytes for Android, or how does it work? The RAM consumption and the system requirements. Like yeah, that that's too detailed. Too detailed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's too detailed. We want to keep uh, our value. We don't want to expose it to the in public, okay. right? But I mean, this is totally awesome. Does it make sense in the future to have an expanded Android experience where it's not just uh, Android apps in the Dalvik and all that, but where you could, uh, like, we, like I've tried to ask you already, but where you could have, uh, let's say, uh, Ubuntu apps, Windows apps, iOS apps, everything just work on Android. But sense? no, it doesn't make sense for for canonical. Why why we should do the the, the work for Android side, right? We're we're distributing uh, Ubuntu on the device. We're trying to add more value on it and add more value for Ubuntu as well. But so there's running, a lot of value in this solution there, where people can run Ubuntu on the Android, right? But I mean, the, which one does canonical prefer? This solution or that solution? This is the newer one. This is the one you showed last year. They're aiming to different uh, market uh, segment. So for this one, it's more like uh, a high-end phone, super phone segment. User, they they thought they think the 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 stock image from the vendor, the Android, is not enough for them. They need more powerful software running on the device, so they can do their work on their on this kind of device as well. So you cannot can, mm -hmm. you cannot because this is the same hardware, same hardware. Here. Yes, you cannot just have uh, one thing doing everything. You need to have do two different solutions. Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't want to like provide Ubuntu OS as well on top of this one, like in, as an option. You could switch from Android to Ubuntu OS and stuff. You know, like doesn't make any sense to have everything like multi-booting everything. No, that that doesn't make any sense because, as I said, the Android apps they they are written on different uh, user scenario. They designed for the small screen. But the, the Ubuntu apps, they are designed for a larger screen. You, you cannot just put the, the legacy Linux app running on the phone. It doesn't yeah. make any sense, and it's hard to use. In this case, we're very, the user experience yeah. will be really, very, very bad. So what happens when you connect uh, the MHL to here? Does it no, it doesn't. No, nothing? it won't. Nothing. It's not going to do the desktop? No. So it means that it doesn't run all the Ubuntu apps? So it runs all the, the new stuff? Like A little bit like Windows does only Metro? And not the old Windows on some devices. That's a bit, a little bit uh, similar. Like it's only the new apps, only the new Ubuntu OS apps. Um, so for for this one, um, I think uh, it's just the Ubuntu applications running on this. Uh, we are trying to uh, have a vision that we can run in the same using the same experience and run in the same app. Um, with Ubuntu on various different devices, on the TV, on the phone, on the tablet, all right, on the PC as well. Cool. All right. Uh, big partners announced here, Computex. Any? I cannot comment about that. No, no, no. no. We'll have to go and look. Yeah. There is some announcement. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks a lot.